If you need cheap and reliable coins, head on over to my sponsor, AOEA.com, and use my code VIC for 3% off. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic here, back with another Madden 21 video. And in today's episode, we're gonna be rebuilding the Miami Dolphins with the new addition of Jalen Waddle. There's currently construction outside of my house, so if you hear banging noise, I'm really sorry. That's just how it is sometimes. But still, I think this is going to be a moderately hard team to rebuild. Their defense is pretty bad, honestly, and I'm trying, trying my best not to do trades in the beginning, so that way it's labeled as realistic, so that way people don't get mad in my comments and be like, oh my god, this is unrealistic. Anyways, guys, you guys know the gist of my channel. So, first of all, we have Jalen Waddle here. I gave him star development, I believe. It's just star. Don't think he's that much of a stud. I, I think I gave Rashad Bateman star. That's a little biased since I'm a Ravens fan. But uh, on defense, I gave Jalen Phillips superstar development because I think him, is, he is the second best pass rusher in the draft class. I personally think that Quiddy Pay is better, but that's just my personal opinion. Anyone can have their own take. Miles Gaskin were, were eventually needing to replace him. I don't like Miles Gaskin since he's really low overall and probably won't do anything for this team. So anyways, guys, I'm not going to skip the trades and get straight to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark coming off a loss to the Los Angeles Rams as we are three and five as we are bottom of the division behind literally everyone, obviously. And looking into the re-signings, we have Will Fuller, 86 overall star developments. I could have sworn this dude was like 28 or 27, but he's only 26 and I up his salary and he stays with the team. Everyone else here, Hunter Long should not be here. I'll adjust that contract later. He should be on a four-year deal, not a one-year deal. So let's just get to the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs coming off a win to the Buffalo Bills, but we did not make the playoffs. Finishing 7-9, third in the division. All right. Tua Tungvalu had pretty solid in yards, pretty good in touchdowns too. 29th best offense though, and 32nd best defense. Okay, so I'm still trying to learn, to learn defensive playbooks. I'm still testing them out, so don't blame me on that. Tua was pretty solid. Miles Gaskin, Gaskin kind of sucked. Jalen Waddle, 1,300 yards and 14 TDs. Putting a receiver in the slot really changes things. It really makes them way better. Will Fuller with 1,000 yards and six. Byron Jones with the most tackles on team tackles for a loss. 14 for Jalen Phillips. Sacks, five and a half for uh, Andrew Van Ginkle. Three interceptions for Eric Rowe. Safeties, one for Christian Wilkins. And defensive touchdowns, one for Justin Coleman. Okay. So overall, those stats honestly didn't look that bad, but we were apparently the worst defense, which kind of confuses me. So let's just move into the offseason. Here we are in the offseason as the Dallas Cowgirls beats the Browns in the Super Bowl. That's a new turn of events that the Browns don't win. But uh, yeah, looking into those awards, not really anything for us in the Dolphins. And looking into the AFC East, Emmanuel Sanders retires as a Buffalo Bill. And looking into the contracts now, there's a lot of things to look into in the offseason, obviously. Probably the biggest part of re franchise rebuilds is just a part of it. So let's look into the team. 85 overall defense, surprisingly. Offensively, Tua obviously only has star. Jalen Waddle is now up to superstar. I did not give him that. I only gave him star before. So route technician and grab and go, as always just in case it happened to the game just uh just for your information yeah i forgot to mention this before this offensive line is horrendously bad i need to fix it really quickly and because offensive line does affect simulation now eric rowe somehow has star dev same with bobby mccain okay they're both 28 years old and probably won't progress to be anything but uh yeah secondary looking a lot better now so let's just move into free agency here we are after free agency as we were picking up Gus Edwards, and then we were also picking up Jordan Lewis, star dev, to replace Justin Coleman, and I got Max, Matt Shurka back on a really, really cheap deal, so let's just move into the draft. So in the draft, I'm picking up Vinny Rutherford, 76 overall, normal development center. I definitely need to improve the offensive line, so this will be a big pickup. And next, I'm picking up another, another center because he's the best offensive lineman on the board so i can move him to guard 75 with hidden though definitely a lot better so this is the overlook of the team after the draft offensive line has definitely improved and i think we're looking pretty solid on offense i wish we had like better tackles though defensively we are looking pretty solid i need to replace someone with from andrew van ginkle i can't have andrew van ginkle as my number one pass rusher i'm pretty sure he's a run stopper anyway so uh yeah i don't i don't know about this team this is a. Uh, <laughs> This is interesting is what I can say about it. Devontae Parker is in the slot, so he will probably get a lot of reps. I'll just start Preston Williams there instead. Yeah, we also have four receivers. The Dolphins got a lot of receivers, pretty average receivers, but let's get to the midseason. Here we are at the midseason mark coming off a loss to the Indianapolis Colts as we are 0-8. 
Okay, that's um, logic for you. I really need to find new playbooks, dude. I'm really I'm testing out a lot of playbooks for those of the Dolphins fans in here. Like, oh, you know nothing about man simulation. I'm testing out defensive playbooks. I'm really trying it here. I know my offensive playbook is God tier. Runs tight, run tight in the offensive playbook. They get no rushing yards, but they get an absolute crap ton of passing yards. Jason Sanders and Mike Kosicki do not both return. Jason Sanders wants more money, even though he's a kicker. Emmanuel Ogba is a pretty solid option, so I'll definitely resign him as he resigns. Jerome Baker is also a solid option. 24 years years old only he could get start development and he is a 79 overall he's pretty solid i'll take him preston williams just not interested in we already have three other receivers that i don't need to resign well that i that i have resigned i just don't need preston williams in general so let's get to the playoffs here we are in the playoffs obviously not making the playoffs coming off a win to the patriots finishing at three and 13 as we were 0 and 8 the midseason mark not surprised to what was horrendously bad worst offense in the nfl 27th best defense so i guess their defense has improved to what 35 20 for 11 terrible gus 5 and 660 terrible jalen waddle almost 1200 yards 12 tds as he continues to produce and bernardrick mckinney 120 tackles tackles for a loss 14 for Andrew Van Ginkle, sacks, 6.5 for Jalen Phillips. Finally, he's producing three interceptions for Jerome Baker. Safeties on the team is one for Andrew Van Ginkle, and defensive touchdowns is one. So anyways, guys, on that, it is time to jump into the offseason. Here we are in the offseason as the Browns beat the living daylights out of the Eagles in the Super Bowl. And looking into it, we don't have any awards for us, but the Browns, of course, make the Super Bowl just like they do every year. So let's look into the retirements here and looking into the AFC East. Another Bill retires in Jerry Hughes. So now let's look into the re-signings. Obviously, I want Jason Sanders back. He's a, he's a really good kicker. I mean, I don't think kickers affect simulation too much, but if I hop in, I would like one. So he resigns the team, even though I think he shouldn't deserve that contract. He's a kicker. But uh, kickers have feelings too, I guess. Looking into the team now offensively, um, Jalen Waddle has superstar X Factor. Not really a surprise there, as I'm going to give him double me, even though he's not really that archetype. Double me is just so good. It's amazing. The offensively looking into it, Bernardrick McKenney now has superstar developments. How did he get that? And why does Eric Rowe have superstar development? I don't know how these people are getting it, and he shouldn't even deserve it. Byron Jones is a superstar X Factor. Who is getting these interceptions? I, I don't know if he's just having an all around great season, but still, let's get to free agency. Here we are after free agency, picking up Bradley Chubb so I can finally replace Andrew Van Ginkle. I'm also picking up Naheem Hines because our rushing game sucks. I have three running backs that I really don't need, so let's get to the draft. Here we are in the draft, picking up the number one pick overall. I'm picking up a 75 overall normal defensive tackle. What a bust. I am very upset with this pick. Still looking into it, this is the team after the draft. Offensive line still needs to improve. Offensively, we're just like the worst team in the off offensive term, so I don't know what's up with that. So let's just get to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark coming off a loss of the Steelers. That's not a good sign as we continue to lose. 7-1. and one. Okay, I guess that's a good sign. I guess we were on a hot winning streak at 7-0. I guess we just lost to the Steelers. Eric Rowe, 83 overall, superstar development. As I want him back on the team because he's a pretty solid option, even though he probably won't progress because he is 29 and he'll start hitting regression really hard unless he gets X-Factor. Bobby McCain is a no. He's 29, just like him, but he only has star dev, so he won't even get to an 80 overall, I doubt. So anyways, guys, on that, I would say that is time to hop into the playoffs as we are 7-1. Here we are in the playoffs coming off a win to the New York Jets and looking into, do we have a first round bye? I think we do. Yes, we do. 12 and 4. Tua had a great season. That's amazing. Is that MVP? Tua Tungavailoa for MVP. Literally the worst, the worst season you could have had from a quarterback last season. Came back and did amazing. 13th best offense, 13th best defense. That's what I like to see. 4,400 yards, 48 TDs, 12 interceptions. Naheem Hines, only three TDs, 800. 832 yards, not that great. Jalen Waddle, 27 TDs and 1,600 yards. Hold up. Hold up. I'm pretty sure that's a record. Let's go to receiving TDs. He beat Randy Moss and Jerry Rice for the most receiving TDs in a season from any wide receiver. Okay. That's cool, I guess. You know, that that's cool how you casually just do that and just, okay. Uh, Jalen Waddle, amazing. Mike Kosicki, 1,000 with five as well. Defensively. Uh, Bernardrick McKenning with 109 tackles, tackles for a loss, 11 for Marcus Styles, our number one overall pick. 
and seven sacks for Christian Wilkins, interceptions five for Xavier Howard, and safeties on the team is one for Jerome Baker, and defensive touchdowns is zero. So I expected, honestly, a lot more sacks with Bradley Chubb, but Christian Wilkins had the most sacks, which is kind of surprising. So let's simulate this wild card round to see who we're going to be facing in the divisional round as we are 12-4, and four, so should be easy. 9-7, and seven, Tennessee Titans, we are 12-4, and four. come on. Show it to me as we should be moving on to the conference championship. Okay, that's cool too. That, that, I love it whenever this game genuinely bends me over and says, yeah, it doesn't matter what your record is. We're going to lose in the divisional to the Titans. As a Ravens fans, I, I know what it feels like to lose in the divisional to the Titans, even though they're a low overall. So this is what the offseason looks like as the Chiefs beat the Buccaneers, as we're mixing it up, as the Chiefs get their revenge. Tua wins MVP. Tua was never good, wins coach of the year. And a look, that's kind of ironic, but uh, still, let's look into the retirements as a Patriot and Devin McCourty retires. I actually would have liked to pick him up in free agency. He's always in free agency. I would have liked to pick him up as a free safety, but I guess he retires. Everyone here is kind of trash, so I definitely don't want to resign them. Let's look into the team now to see what we have and looking into it. Tua Tungvaluwa obviously has superstar developments because, you know, he won the MVP. But for some reason, he's only an 85 with morale. He's an 83 without it. I don't, I don't think EA would ever make a superstar player an 83 overall, but okay. But looking into it defensively, uh, I don't see any upgrades. Yeah, I don't see any upgrades. Our the number one overall pick didn't get an upgrade. That sucks. But still, let's look into free agency. Here we are after free agency as we're picking up Matthew Ioannidis to replace our number one overall pick. And also, we are picking up Nate Davis, a right guard. And we're picking up a right tackle. And we're picking up Mitch Morris to improve our offensive line. So let's just move in to the draft. So we're going all or nothing here in this final season. I'm trading a three, a four, and a five for Micah Hyde, who is an 84 overall and has been regressing since the start of the rebuild. He is an axe factor, but he will definitely retire in the very next season. Oh my God, you're trading within the division. Yeah, shut up. It's fine. It doesn't matter. So this is our pick right here, 90, uh, 74 overall right end. It doesn't really matter. He, I guess he's replacing Christian Wilkins. So this is the team after the draft, and our offensive line looks pretty good. Offensively, we, we do look pretty good all around. It does, It's nothing like stud-like, but it's great. Defensively, though, I think we look pretty stud-like, especially with defense overall, secondary especially. So it's time to move in to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark, coming off a win to the Buffalo Bills, Micah Hyde's former team. Buffalo Bills 5-3, and three, top of the division, as we are 4-4, four and four, I believe, at third in the division. And just like every season in the final season, I don't need to resign anybody because it is the final season. So I won't worry about that. So it is time to move in to the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs, coming off a win to the Patriots, as we are 9-7 and seven here to face the 11-5 and five Browns. We've already lost. They're 11-5 and five Browns. It, there's no chance. Tua had a great season in yards, meh, in touchdowns. 8th best offense in the NF, 25th best, oh my god, how does this defense go 25th? 4,700 yards, 31 TDs, 15 interceptions, Naheem Hines was not good at all. Receiving wise, Devontae Parker, 1,300 yards, 12 TDs, nice of you to show up in the final season. And defensively, Jalen Phillips with 104 tackles, great to see it. And tackles for a loss, 13 for Jalen Phillips, he's really producing sacks, 12 for Bradley Chubb, that's exactly what I signed you for, and Emmanuel Ogba has 11 and a half. Good to see that they've actually finally produced numbers as well. Everyone, It looks like everyone's producing numbers. Four interceptions for Byron Jones and safeties is zero. And defensive touchdowns is one for Byron Jones. How is this defense 27th? It looks really good. It looks a lot better than even last season. So anyways, guys, other than that, we're going to lose to the Browns. That's just how it is in simulation for the wild card. That, it, they're the Browns, dude. Oh, Okay, never mind. Well, it looks like we're gonna lose in the divisional. I, I because you can't you can't just beat the Browns then go to the Super Bowl. There's no way the Browns are meant to be there. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So it looks like I'm gonna need to start hopping into the divisional round in the final season if we haven't won the Super Bowl yet. Because I never hop in the wild card. I don't see the point of it. And I I won't hop into the divisional round unless it's like the final season. But we did get Jalen Waddle up to a 99 overall superstar X factor. So I guess that's a semi successful rebuild, even though we didn't win the. Super Bowl. This rebuild was about Jalen Waddle, and he really, really had a stud season, surpassing Jerry Rice and Randy Moss for the season record for receiving TDs. So that's absolutely amazing. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this rebuild. I hope you guys all enjoy it. I'll see you guys all in the next one.